Hi, I'm Charles with AnyCat. Previously, we saw that Mofan was somehow able to awaken the rare fire and even more rare lightning talents, but has decided to keep that a secret from everyone. During the final exam, Muhei attempts to sabotage the results, but Mofan's power overcomes it. The story continues as we see that Mofan receives the highest grade of A for his magic release. The principal of the school recognizes Mofan's hard work and potential, especially considering he is the first mage in his family. This changes Mu Zhao's view of Mofan and tells him that he wants to forget his past wrongdoings. Mu Zhao gives him a fire bracelet to help him harness his powers and accepts him into his family. Bai, however, is only told to work harder. Mr. Shang tells Mofan to thank the man, but he refuses to be someone's lapdog to be ordered around and explains he isn't spineless like Bai. Mu Zhao must be told to calm down when Mofan says he will never forget how Mu Zhao treated him and his father, revealing that Sing still has pain in his back from that day three years ago. Mu Hei wants him expelled, but the principal is not willing to go that far, so Bai says they should let him beat some respect into him. Mu Zhao would like his adopted son Yuang to fight instead, and the principal gives Mofan another chance to apologize, but he says that a duel is actually what he wants. If he loses, he will apologize, but if he wins, then Mu Zhao must apologize for what he did to his father. The Mage Association, however, forbids underage fighting, so they must wait two years before they can have their fight. Mo Fan is informed that Yu Wang is much stronger than Bai, and realizes he must train hard to prepare. The next semester, we see that Mo Fan is in the elite class with others that have managed to have their magic release. It is explained that they are given numbers based on their powers, and Mo Fan is the best with number one. It is then explained that the class has three bracelets that they will take turns using. The top three students get a month each, but Mofan will only get to use one for 10 days as punishment for his rude behavior towards Mu Zhao. Furthermore, the bracelets are very precious, and if anyone were to lose or damage them, not only would they be expelled, they would be banned from being a mage. While practicing, Bai explains that there are different levels of bracelets. The one given to the students is able to speed progress by 20%, but one of the spirit bracelets that the Mu family possesses is able to speed up by 40%. It is revealed that Mu Zhao has allowed Yuang to use the bracelet for 6 months in preparation for his fight against Mo Fan. Later, Mo Fan explains that his pendant keeps reacting whenever he practices, however this time it swallows the bracelet. He begs it to spit the bracelet out just as Miss Tang arrives. She assumes from his behavior that he has lost a bracelet and he tells her what happened. He explains the pendant is a family heirloom and she reveals that it is also a magical gear that speeds progress, but it must be fed. Not only does it improve stats, but it can absorb energy and upgrade itself. He thinks about how the thing must be responsible for allowing him to release two talents when others couldn't even do one, and wonders if he will be scolded for having it. He tells Miss Tang he can't control it and that she should keep it. However, she explains that it is one of a kind and senses that it has a spiritual bond with Mofan. She asks that he keep it concealed and explains it will only continue to grow if it feeds on spirits and other magical gears. She promises to settle the matter of the missing bracelet, but he will owe her. Her help makes Mofan wonder if she is actually attracted to his amazing charisma. Later, the students are taken to a field trip to the edge of the safe zone where monsters are kept from entering. Mofan reveals that his fire stardust has been restless and wonders if it is upgrading to level 2. When they arrive, the chief instructor explains that they will take part in a bounty hunt. As long as one out of the 100 students manages to complete the hunt, they will all receive A's. The students are concerned since only mages with several years of experience can do bounty hunts among monsters, and Mr. Shang agrees. However, the chief instructor doesn't, explaining they are the best school in Magic City and should show it. Mofan only really cares about what the prize is for completing the bounty hunt and it is revealed that they will receive magical armor. Mofan knows that Yuang is part of the wealthy Mu family and will definitely have the best armor, so he can't afford to lose. The students pass through some obstacles easily enough once the bounty hunt has begun, allowing them to demonstrate their control over their abilities. They arrive at a cave that had once served as a den for one-eyed wolves. It had been cleared out previously, but the students have been tasked with checking for leftover monsters and finding a lost bracelet. Outside, it is revealed that the chief has ordered someone to watch over them, and Mr. Shang assumes that there aren't actually any wolves left in the cave. The chief says that there is something in there though, and that the students need the experience. Miss Tang thinks about how Mo Fan is the most powerful among them since he has been practicing with the pendant, but doubts if he will be able to take on a monster. 
Some students fear an encounter with a monster, but the class bully explains that they just need to stick around by, and he will simply freeze any enemies. Mofa notices that the water in the pond is only half full based on the water line, which is especially odd since it rained after they got there. He must explain to the clueless Zhang that something really big inside the cave must have drunk it all, and he goes to warn the others. However, the other students don't care and mock Zhang for looking for an excuse to not go in since he is so afraid. Moments later, the group is approached by a one-eyed wolf and Bai's attempt at using magic fails. Another thinks to try but must be rescued by Mofan. It is revealed that the monster is actually a pet in disguise and the chief is glad since if it was a real monster they all would have died. He knew they wouldn't be able to defeat the pet and hoped they would have at least been able to release some magic. They are disappointed that no one seems up to the task when they begin to see light from the cave and assume it's the gifted Bai. They are correct as Bai holds the wolf back and we see that the students can't find the rope they used to get down to the cave. The girl Mofan rescued named Minzo confidently returns to the cave and releases a powerful fire attack, which only infuriates the wolf. The other lightning user in the class manages to paralyze it for a moment, but that doesn't last very long. Bai is useless against it and Minzo's second attempt fails as well. Just then, Mofan arrives, realizing that the level 1 attacks of his classmates are ineffective, and he unleashes his most powerful level 2 fire attack. The wolf is engulfed in flames and must flee to the pond. The instructors are impressed and relieved to see that someone has mastered a level 2 attack. However, it is revealed that the wolf is no longer responding to their commands. It had been originally instructed to not hurt the students, but now seems to be out of control. The students do their best to avoid the out of control beast, and Mofan realizes he is the last of the top students to still be capable of fighting. Zhang comes to help him, but the two must retreat further into the cave. Minzo explains that they are at a great disadvantage the further in the cave they go. Some students are grateful for their bravery, while others say their death shouldn't be in vain, so they should leave. Minzo wants to go in after them just as the chief arrives and is brought up to speed on the situation. Inside, Zhang bravely rescues Mofan from an attack but is gravely injured. This sends Mofan over the edge and he finally decides to unleash his lightning magic. His first attack is hardly effective but manages to stun it a bit and Mofan comes up with a plan. It works just as planned and the monster is finally defeated. A light emerges from its body and enters Mofan's pendant. The chief arrives and is amazed that Mofan had somehow managed to defeat the wolf. He knows that his fire magic wouldn't have killed it and Mofan explains how he had used a rock to pierce it. He begs that they get Zhang some medical assistance but the chief still can't get over how Mofan managed to do it. Especially considering that the speed and reflexes of the wolf would have been able to dodge the rock easily. He begs that he focus on Zhang again and so they leave. The owner of the pet wolf is furious that the chief killed it but is shocked along with everyone else when it is revealed that Mofan had done it. The owner refuses to believe that since his pet is even more powerful than normal monsters and could easily have killed even experienced mages. They all still think it had to be the chief and when asked, Mofan explains how he did it without revealing his use of lightning magic. As the instructor cries over his pet, nearby students finally begin to give some credit to Mofan for his bravery and understand now why he is number one in the class. Miss Tang explains to them that if the pet was an actual monster, they would have all been killed when they initially encountered it, since they failed to use any magic, and that monsters they meet in the future will be bloodthirsty killers that show no mercy. The bounty hunt didn't go as planned, but all the students will still receive an A, and Mofan will receive an S. However, another instructor mentions that Mofan not only used level 2 magic, but also defeated the wolf, which is deserving of the armor and everyone agrees. Afterwards, Mofan is awarded a medal and offered a position working for the chief after he graduates, but he only wants to know where his armor is. Other students are given their award next, but the chief can't get over how Mofan managed to win the fight and begins to question if he had not told the whole truth. Thanks for watching part 2. If this video gets 10,000 likes, I will know you want to continue the series and we'll make part 3.